Hey guys, Michael from Cock Chemistry. In this video, we'll be talking about how to determine which compound has a higher vape pressure. Let's start off with the definition of vape pressure. Vape pressure is defined as the pressure of the gas above the liquid at equilibrium. So let's say we have a closed container and we have some liquid. Well, some of these liquids are going to have enough energy and escape, and you're going to get get escape to become a gas. So you're going to get some gas above the liquid, and vape pressure is just the pressure of the gas above the liquid. So how is the vapor pressure, how do we determine which compound has a higher vapor pressure? We do that by looking at the, the strength of the intermolecular forces. The compound with the weaker intermolecular force is going to have a higher vapor pressure. And it's because if the liquid molecules are weakly attracted to each other or not holding onto each other as tightly, then more and more of the liquid can escape and you're going to get more and more gas. And if you have more and more gas, then you're going to get a higher vapor pressure. Now let's take a look at the different type of intermolecular forces and how to, uh, what their ranking is in terms of the strength. The five main types of intermolecular forces that you'll see in most chemistry classes are these. Lend dispersion forces are also, sometimes also called van der Waals forces. Those are the weakest and those exist in only in, in every every compound. Every compound have lend dispersion forces. Dipole dipole is the next weakest and those exist in polar molecules only. Then hydrogen bonding is the next strongest and those exist in compounds that have HF, HO, or HN. And then you have ion dipole and then ion ion. Those are the intermolecular forces that exist in ionic compounds. So ion ion is the strongest and then lend dispersion forces are the weakest. Now let's take a look at some examples where we have to determine which compound has the higher vapor pressure. In the following problems we have to circle the substance with the higher vapor pressure. To do that remember Substances with weaker intermolecular forces will have higher vapor pressures. So we're going to first determine what are the primary intermolecular forces that are present in each of these compounds, and then look for the compound that has the weaker IMF, and that's the compound that will have the higher vapor pressure. So HCl, HCl is a polar compound, so its primary intermolecular force will be dipole-dipole. HF, we know that will have hydrogen bonding, because whenever you have HF, HO, or HN, that's hydrogen bonding. And dipole-dipole is weaker than hydrogen bonding. So since it has a weaker intermolecular force, it will have a higher vapor pressure. Next one, Cl2 versus OCS. Well, we can start by looking at the Lewis structure to determine if it's polar or nonpolar. Cl2 looks like this, and you can see that this molecule is completely symmetrical. That makes it nonpolar. So if it's nonpolar, it will only have lend dispersion forces. OCS, on the other hand, looks like this, and you see that one is not symmetrical. So since it's not symmetrical, it makes it polar, and if it's polar, its primary intermolecular force will be dipole-dipole. London dispersion force is weaker than dipole-dipole, so CO2 will have the higher vapor pressure because that's a weaker IMF. Next one, C5H12 versus C2H4. Both of these are hydrocarbons, which just means it's a compound containing only carbon and only hydrogen. Hydrocarbons are nonpolar, and since they're nonpolar, they'll both only have London dispersion forces. London dispersion forces, is, the strength of London dispersion forces is affected by the number of electrons or the size of the molecule. Larger molecules with more electrons will have stronger London dispersion forces. So since C2H4 is smaller than C5H12, because it has fewer atoms and fewer electrons, that means it will have weaker London dispersion forces, and since it has weaker intermolecular forces, it will have a higher vapor pressure. CH3OH, immediately we see there's OH here, so we know that this compound will have hydrogen bonds. And then the next one, CH2O, that looks like like this, and you can see this one is is not symmetrical, because then you have uh, you have one O and then but two and two H's. So this will make it polar, and since it's polar, it will have dipole dipole as its primary intermolecular force. Dipole dipole once again is weaker than hydrogen bonding, so since it's weaker, it will have a higher vapor pressure. Neon versus Br2, both of these are nonpolar because when you have a single ad single element, that's just uh, nonpolar is London dispersion force, and when you have a compound made of this, uh, one type element, that's also nonpolar because it's the same electronegativity. So since they're both nonpolar, they'll both have the London dispersion forces only. Then we can take a look at the uh, molar mass to determine which one is smaller. So let's take a look at a periodic table. Neon's molar mass is or neon's molar mass is uh, about 20, and bromine's molar mass is about 100. 
uh, 80 times 2, which is 180. So since neon has a lower molar mass, it has weaker lens dispersion forces, and weaker intermolecular forces means higher vapor pressure. And then lastly, H2O at 25 degrees Celsius versus H2O at 40 degrees Celsius. Both of these are water, and the only difference is temperature. With temperature, just know that as the temperature increases, that will lead to a greater vapor pressure. And that's because at higher temperature, got liquids are more easily able to escape, so you're going to get more gas molecules, and more gas molecules more means more pressure. So H2O at 40 degrees Celsius will have a higher vapor pressure than H2O at 25 degrees Celsius. And that's it. That's how you can determine what type of compound, which compound has a higher vapor pressure. So two things to remember. As the intermolecular force gets weaker, the vapor pressure gets higher. And also as the temperature gets higher, the vapor pressure gets higher. I know I kind of breezed through the part where we talked about how to determine what IMF the compound has. So if you're having trouble following along there, check out my, other, my video in the description below where I go over how to determine intermolecular forces in detail. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry. If you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.